This video is sponsored by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. If you subscribe to Mr. Mobile, you may already know that this is a mid-range version of a well-received smartphone from one of the biggest companies on the planet. But in the weeks since most reviewers rendered their verdicts, it's become more than that. Now it's the focal point of a debate about what really matters in smartphones. Now, how you feel about a product will always depend on your particular priorities, but that's never been more true than it is with this new phone, which in my view is the best you can buy in the US in its price class. The only thing you've got to do is take it for what it is. I'm Michael Fisher, and this is the Google Pixel 6a. When Google puts an A on the end of its pixels, it means it's going for affordability. So let's start by saying this is a $449 device, 25% cheaper than its older, unsuffixed sibling, the Pixel 6. The sacrifices you make for that? A smaller battery with slower charging and no wireless charging at all, downgraded Gorilla Glass 3 on the front and plastic in place of any glass on the back, classic instead of cutting edge cameras, I'll come back to in a sec, and a smaller OLED screen, whose 60 Hz refresh rate became such a bone of contention that it started trending on Twitter on the day the first reviews dropped. Now, if you don't follow the great smartphone screen refresh rate debate, who can blame you? But the general idea is this. In 2022, you want either a 90 Hz or preferably 120 Hz display, so you get maximum smoothness while you're scrolling. The, the contention is that a 60 hertz display is choppy by comparison, and the problem for Google there is that its competitors, like Samsung and nothing, are shipping faster displays at this price point. To be clear, the display probably is the weakest part of this phone. I noticed the same off-angle rainbow discoloration Ryan Hager did in his review for Android Police, and while Tom's guide found a peak brightness of 778 nits, that's still not quite bright enough to stand up to the worst of the summer sun. But here's the thing. Some are calling this display a deal breaker, which is ridiculous to me because it ignores all the value Google packs in to counteract that spec sacrifice. Things like call screening, so you don't waste time on scammers. More features in dictation for voice typing and a voice recorder that lets you search those recorded transcripts. Now Playing, which tells you what song you're hearing in the background without you having to touch a thing. New Quick Phrases, so you also don't have to touch the phone to do things like silence alarms. Stop. Or even Answer Calls. Answer. And Live Translate, to help you communicate across the language barrier. Yeah, independently, they're all just little morsels, but taken in sum with all the other subtleties that Google sneaks in, no, I almost forgot, the excellent haptics, stuff like that, the result is a cocktail of convenience that more than makes up for a screen that some consider too slow. Now, of course, that's subjective, but if you're someone like me who finds refresh rate debates about as tiresome as audiophile complaints about the headphone jack this phone is also missing, well, you'll probably appreciate the Pixel 6a too, especially since Google has finally freed it of the tired, forgettable form factor within which the A-line has been imprisoned since its inception. The 6A adopts the bold LaForge visor of the 6 line, thinner now but just as recognizable, as well as a trio of colorways that reinforce that dedication to design. You can feel the compromise a little in the seam where the plastic meets the side rails, and you can see the slightly larger chin at the screen's bottom bezel, but that's peanuts next to all the added personality the Pixel brings to the table versus, say, Samsung's closest competitor, the Galaxy A53. Uh, the other notable competition, the Nothing Phone 1, is so far ahead of the Pixel in terms of design ambition that, <laughs> well, I, you can see it for yourself. Oh, and then there's the size. At 6.1 inches, it's not truly compact, but it is smaller than the Pixel 6, smaller even than last year's Pixel 5a. There's dust and water resistance built in, and at 178 grams, the heft is just about perfect, too. I've heard from a lot of commenters who complain that reviewers spend too much time talking about the camera in their smartphone reviews. And if you're one of those people, 
Well, you're in luck this time. While cameras are still one of the biggest reasons to get a Pixel, well, there's just not much new to say here. This is the same ultra-wide camera as on the Pixel 6, and alongside it sits the same primary camera that's been found on every Pixel phone for the last five years or so. While some might call that yet another reason to doubt the value of this device, I see it another way. The Pixel has always offered one of the best still photo experiences in smartphones, and as my friend Miriam Jouar has often pointed out, the fact that Google has used the same camera all those years means it's had ample opportunity to tune that camera's performance. So, whether I'm taking shots of my city from a few thousand feet, or speedy river renders of the same, moody nightlife photos of neons and shadows, or Google press event snapshots with friends new and old, midday product quickies for Instagram, or night group selfies with people I've known since well before the first Pixel launched, the point is, I can trust it. It might overdo the HDR on occasion, and its video is still hit and miss in low light, but it's more dependable overall than the vast majority of phone cameras, and certainly more dependable than any phone camera in its price range sold in the US. And when the photos aren't perfect, there are still more Pixel exclusives to come to the rescue. Magic Eraser and Face Unblur among them. All those features are made possible by Google's Tensor chipset, which also carries a few compromises that we have to cover. The Pixel 6a's shortcomings, silicon and non, after I get a quick bite to eat. In the past month, I've been stuck for a week in a quarantine cave, and I've started apartment hunting in one of the most expensive rental markets in the US. So a sponsor that helps me save money in the kitchen and cuts back on my stress while I'm cooking, well, is more welcome than ever. Yep, HelloFresh is back on Mr. Mobile this month, which means I'm back in the kitchen making foolproof step-by-step -step recipes, like one pan cheeseburger lettuce wraps or one pot chicken sausage and chickpea soup. And the meals aren't just easy, they're healthy, with fit and wholesome recipes for when you can't get as many steps in, or you're a veggie or pescatarian type, or you're just getting more serious about your fitness goals as we go into the rest of the summer. And folks, there's a reason I hit up this soup for the third time since becoming a HelloFresh customer. It's delicious. <laughs> Almost 50 boxes later, I can't remember the last time I didn't love one of these dinners, and I can still barely believe I cooked them myself. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code MrMobile16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Let me give it to you one more time. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code MrMobile16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. So from soup to nuts, the Pixel 6a's biggest letdown for me has been power. While Google didn't shrink the battery all that much compared to last year, I found the 6a's endurance to be well short of the Pixel 5a, a figure backed up by my publisher Future Labs in its own testing. And folks, I was going light on the Pixel because I was using another phone for mobile hotspot and media, and even then, more than once, the Pixel 6a decided to end the day without me, only seeing me through 12 or 14 hours, instead of the 16 to 18 I generally need. That battery bummer is compounded by the 18-watt charging speed, which is just too slow. I came home for a quick shower before that Google event around 4 p.m., by which time the phone was down to 33%. By the time I was heading out in the Uber an hour later, it had gotten up to 83%. Not bad, but I gotta believe the 25-watt charging on the Samsung A53 or 33 watts on the Nothing Phone 1 would have gotten me back to a full battery. And speaking of Carl Pei's new flashy phone, it has to be mentioned that if nothing can put wireless charging into a mid-range device, Google should be able to as well. I teased the Tensor before the break, and it's likely that custom silicon is responsible for the added power drain, plus the fact that the phone tends to run hotter than I'm used to. And there's one more concern related to that. Both Android Police and Android Central reported modem issues with their units on cellular and Wi-Fi reception, respectively. And earlier this week, it was reported that some 6A units can be unlocked with unregistered fingerprints. I haven't been able to reproduce that issue, but the fact that my first Pixel 6A review unit had a defective radio that couldn't see the cellular network, well, I admit, it gives me pause. 
especially since Google has been fairly slow to patch bugs on the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. Now, if that's too much for you to stomach, I get it. You shouldn't be expected to beta test critical core features of a phone you've spent money on. And you should keep your eye on reviewers like Marquez, MKBHD, who are working to hold Google accountable for those bug fixes. That said, the 10 days I've spent with my second review device have been much more positive than not, with no reception problems and a much smoother software experience than I had on the pre-release builds. And, you know, that mirrors my luckier streak with the earlier 6 and 6 Pro as well. The issues with the Pixel seem to be mostly with quality control, not design deficiencies. So if you buy one, I'd recommend paying very close attention during the return exchange period and swapping it out if you see signs of a defect. Should you buy one? For me, folks, the answer is yes to anyone who values the total package ahead of a single specification. It's got the best cameras in its class and it's got features you can't find on any other phone. It's a unique, delightful package that I quite enjoy. If you see this video before August 7th, you can claim an additional $50 credit by buying from the Google Store, or if you prefer to finance from your carrier, it's available on all the major US players, as well as in 12 other countries around the world. The Pixel 6a is on sale now. For more of my thoughts on the only $450-ish device that I'd consider buying instead of this, the Nothing Phone 1, see my Fun Phones of 2022 video. And if you're eager to hear me wax poetic about foldables once again, well, so am I. <laughs> Stay tuned. The hinges are just over the horizon. This review was made possible by a review device on loan from Google, but the company had no editorial input or early preview of this content, and it provided no compensation for its production. Until next time, from Michael Fisher, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.